Hi, this is Bartosz Miluski with the fourth installment of the C11 concurrency series. In the previous installment, I promised that I will talk about returning values from threads. You can think of a thread in a very simplified way as an asynchronous function. It takes some arguments, and we talked about it in, in the previous tutorials, and it's supposed to return values. In order to return values, we have to establish some kind of communication channels between two threads. In C11, this communication channel is represented by two objects. One represents the input side of the channel, and it's called the promise, and the other is the output side of the channel, and it's called the future. This is how promises and futures work together. First you create a promise. A promise is a template. It's parameterized by the type of the value that will be passed between threads. When you create a promise, a shared state is allocated automatically. This is the state in which the value will be stored. The next step is to obtain the future from the promise by calling get future. At this point shared state is shared between future and promise and in fact it's reference counted so that both future and the promise go out of scope shared state will be reclaimed. The interesting thing is that future and promise could also be used in single threaded programs because shared state can not only be used to pass values but also exceptions. So if you have the need to pass value or exception in one object, this is the way to go. Now we can create a thread and uh, pass the promise to the thread. So remember, promise is the input end of the channel, so it goes to thread B. Future is the output end of the channel, it stays with thread A. The shared state now is shared between the two threads, and the synchronization is provided by the system. Now what happens next is either promise sets the value, or future tries to get the value. If the future tries to get the value before it's set in the promise, then it will block and wait until the promise sets the value. So here we go thread B is setting the value, so it's putting the string into shared state, and at the same time the state of shared state changes from empty to ready. If the future was already blocked trying to get the value, this signals to the, to the thread A that it's time to wake up and grab the value. So this is what happens here. Thread A calls future get and obtains the string that was sitting there in shared state. At the same time, shared state changes to the invalid state. This is because get can either pass by value or it can move the value. And of course, if the value is moved, as it is in the case of a string, calling get for the second time would be an error. So this is why the state is changed to invalid so the next call to get will always fail. Let's write a simple program that will pass a string from one thread to another using promises and futures. Promises and futures are defined in, uh, in the header file include future. First thing we have to do is to create a promise, std promise, and it's parameterized by the type that we are passing. So in this case this will be std string, and we'll call it promise. Now, once we have a promise, we can extract 
the future from this promise std future and it's also parameterized by the type string future and it's equal to promise dot get future we have promise we have future now we have to pass this promise to our thread function and we want to move it I mean I want to move it you can move it or you can pass it by reference it's up to you promise now if you move the promise then obviously you have to call get future before you create a thread otherwise get future would fail because the promise has already been moved to the other thread so now thread function will have to expect a promise std promise of std string and since we are using move semantics it should expect an r value reference double ampersand promise now on this end so this is the input end we put the value promise set value str oops str okay now on the other side we can retrieve this value std string str equals future that's our receiving end of the channel and we'll just say get okay now if if the thread function has finished at this point uh, get will immediately return the string if it hasn't uh, then it will block until thread function calls set value okay and finally oh we want to print hello from main maybe before we actually block right so this is the work that we are doing in parallel printing hello from main in parallel with the work that's done by the thread function finally we want to do stdc out our string and a new line std end line okay one more thing we forgot and that's to join the thread we can join the thread at any point we could actually join it before we get a future uh, in which case get would return immediately or we can join it right here th join but it's very important to join a thread otherwise our program would terminate okay let's compile it and run it and as expected we got hello from main and hello from future except that this time both were printed from main and the string was passed from one thread to, ma to the main thread using a future let me show you that uh, the promise can be also passed by re reference rather than by move so let me change move to ref and replace the double ampersand with a single ampersand so the difference is that since I'm passing it by reference the promise is not invalidated so I can take this get future and move it right before I use it so there's a little bit more freedom in rearranging things if you pass by reference not a big deal so let me run it
prove that this is actually working. Okay. But m a more interesting thing that I would like to show you is that the string is passed by move. That there is actually no copying done. So I will print the raw pointer here that sits inside the string. You know, a string contains a buffer. And there is a raw pointer to this buffer that can be retrieved by calling str data. Now data returns a pointer to a character, so I'm casting it to void start so that C out can print it as a raw pointer. So I'm printing this raw pointer here inside the thread function, and I will also print it here in main after I have retrieved it. Now if this was really a move, then no copy was made and the pointer will be exactly the same. Let me compile it and run. And indeed we get the same pointer here and here. So this was indeed a move. So far I haven't talked about exceptions. What happens when an exception is thrown inside a thread? If this exception is not caught inside the thread, the program will terminate. So it's always a good idea to put a try-catch inside a thread function. So let me do this try and catch okay let me indent this now suppose that we throw an exception here let's throw a standard exception std exception and it can take a string as an error message let's say exception from future exclamation mark okay now we can catch this exception and do something with it or we can catch all possible exceptions. What do we do with this exception inside the catch block? We want to be able to pass it back to the calling thread, to the parent thread, right? The, the thread that contains the, prom the future uh, corresponding to our promise. So there is a way to do this because promise has a method set exception. Okay, so now the question is what exception? We don't really care what exception it is because we don't deal with this exception here. We'll be dealing with this exception in the main thread. So I'll just put three dots here and I'll catch all exception. But now, what do I do to set exception if I don't have a reference to this exception? Well, that's also easy. There is a function called current exception. Current exception will just retrieve any exception that was caught and uh, make a copy of it. So this is on the thread side. We caught an exception, we set exception, in the promise. Now where does this exception end up? In the main thread. It will actually be rethrown when we call get. So let's put try catch around get. Try and the printout as well and say catch. Now here we know what we can do with the exception. This is where we are handling the exception. So we might as well catch a specific exception. std exception e. 
Okay, and we can print this exception std c out. Now, how do we uh, access? Uh, we just say what exception what std end line. Okay, and close. So here's what's happening. Inside the thread function, we put a try catch block and we throw an exception. It is caught here and it is just passed through the promise. Now it comes back when we call get in the main thread and the exception is rethrown and we catch it and we print it. So let's run this program and see what happens. Here it is. And indeed, there's hello from main, and then there is exception from future. So the exception was passed from the thread, from the worker thread to the main thread, and it was displayed. It was caught and then displayed. You might be asking the question, look, all we are doing here is calling a function asynchronously. So why do we have to put so much boilerplate code around it? And why can't we just call a regular function instead of this instrumented function that takes a uh, promise and sets the value? And it so happens that the standard library in C++11 has a function called async that does this thing much simpler. So let me start by renaming this to a regular function because we don't want to have a special instrumentation. We want to be able to call a regular function. So let's get rid of, rid of the promise and instead of setting the value in the promise, we'll just return it like normal people. Okay? And of course we have to change the return type std string. Now inside main I'm just going to get rid of all these of these three lines of code that create the promise. We don't need the promise anymore. Uh, gets a future from the promise and starts a thread. We are not starting a thread anymore. We are starting a task. So we are calling std async and pass it a function fun. Now how do we retrieve this value that's returned from the function? We'll still use a future in fact, I'm not going even to bother writing the type of the fu future. I'll call it auto ftr equals std async. So now we have the future. We can get from the future. So this is exactly the same mechanism. It's just syntactic sugar over what we were doing so far. It works exactly the same way. And the other thing is that we can get rid of thread join because we don't have any thread anymore. Okay, let's compile it and run it. And of course, the result is the same as before. Nothing changed, just the code is much simpler. What about exceptions? When we were working with promises, we had to catch the exception inside the thread function and then call set exception on the promise. Here we don't have a promise, so we just simply throw the exception. And the system will catch this exception for us and transmit it to the calling thread so that it will be rethrown by get. So we have to put try catch around get, just as uh, we as we did before. Okay, indent. Okay, and I'll just copy this code 
here. Okay, close the brace. And here, here we are. So this is much simpler than with promises. And the function looks like just a regular function. We don't have to do anything special. We can return values, we can throw exceptions. So let me just run this program. And indeed, we got hello from main and exception from task. This is the exception that was passed through the channels, the invisible channels, between the task and the calling thread. Finally, let me show you one interesting thing. You remember I removed thread join from main. This is because we no longer have a thread. Thread join and future get are these two places where the execution of the thread is forced. So now I have a function that actually is void. It doesn't return anything. So when I create a future for this task, I cannot call get on it because there is no value returned by the thread. So there is no join and there is no get. So there's nothing forcing the thread to execute, right? Well, actually, there is one thing. That's the destructor of the future. The destructor of the future is the final thing that can force the execution of the task. When it runs the task, it will print starting task, then it will wait for 8 seconds, and then it will print ending task. Let's see what happens. Okay, we are at the end of main, and exiting from main was printed, but the destructor has not yet been called. So let me single step through the end of main. This will force the destructor of future to be called. Okay, and indeed the task has started, and it's now waiting for 8 seconds. Now it came back from the wait and you see we have exited from main. So main could not exit before the task has finished executing. 